The following is a presentation of Tomorrow's World. Dunkirk. The name evokes images of powerful German tank divisions threatening to destroy hundreds of thousands of Allied troops. Fierce air battles between the outnumbered Royal Air Force and the Luftwaffe, the feared German Air Force. British and French soldiers awaiting rescue on the beaches of France. And a thousand ships, large and small, comprising one of the largest naval rescue operations the world has ever seen. Books have been written about it. Movies have been filmed depicting the dramatic rescue and stories of heroism. But there's one part of the story which must never be forgotten. That is the role the weather played, and in particular God's hand in the weather, which turned a disaster into a miracle. Let's explore that today on Tomorrow's World. You won't want to miss it. Stay tuned. The month was May. The year was 1940. Winston Churchill had just been named Prime Minister of Great Britain. And within one month, Hitler's panzer divisions had punched a hole in the French lines. Their action created a breach that separated the bulk of the French armies in southern France from the British, French, and Belgian armies to the north. It was an unqualified disaster for the Allies. They soon found themselves surrounded with the Germans closing in. The Allies attempted to break through the German lines to rejoin the French to the south, but were repelled. It became painfully clear that in order to preserve any semblance of an army, they would have to retreat. They would have to make their way to the sea. Unbelievably, Hitler instructed his tank divisions to stop when they were on the brink of encircling and destroying the retreating Allies. Apparently, he wanted his air force, the Luftwaffe, to bask in the glory of decimating the Allies. But then something happened. Here's how one World War II veteran told the story. The English Channel became as smooth as glass. Fog closed in. Battleships, destroyers, cruisers, ocean liners, motorboats, rowboats, rafts, anything that would float moved across the English Channel under the protective cover of dense fog. The German chiefs of staff watched in helpless fury as the Royal Navy and, quote, swarms of miserable little boats, end quote, began evacuating the cream of the British Army to England. The weather abruptly changed to give the Allies their chance to escape. Now, if you are a regular viewer of this program, you know that at Tomorrow's World, we believe that God is directly involved in what's going on right here on Earth. He made us. He is guiding the events surrounding us, and He uses the weather as a tool for His purposes. And that's why today we're offering the booklet, Who Controls the Weather? Most people don't give the weather a second thought except to complain about it. But it's actually a fascinating study to learn how God has given blessings and has withheld them in history through something as mundane as the weather. God is alive. God is in control. He uses the weather to accomplish His will. You need this booklet to open your eyes to this astounding fact. It's absolutely free. We want you to have it for your personal study. Write, call, or click today for Who Controls the Weather? Today's offer is yours absolutely free. No cost, no obligation. Call now. 1-800-236-0531 or write to us at the address on your screen or visit us online at tomorrowsworld.org With this offer you will also receive your free subscription to Tomorrow's World magazine full of timely articles and unique insights on today's important issues and be sure to go to tomorrowsworld.org 
forward slash digital. Have a digital subscription sent right to your email inbox faster than postal mail. Visit us online now. In this program today, we've been discussing the miracle of Dunkirk. We've been talking about how the change in weather saved the British and French forces from certain destruction. In the next few segments, we'll ask three questions. The first one is, did God really save the British? Was it really a miracle? Or was it just time and chance? A happy coincidence? Let's look at what has been written about that nine-day span, including some first-hand testimonies. Here's what one author, Arthur Devine, wrote back in 1963, just 23 years after it happened. There was from first to last a queer medieval sense of miracle about the Dunkirk affair. You remember the old quotation about the miracle that crushed the Spanish Armada, God sent a wind. This time, God withheld the wind. Had we had one onshore breeze of any strength at all in the first days, we would have lost 100,000 men. Remarkable. It was that close, just a little different direction of wind. The margin of error that small that with a slight change, it would have meant the deaths of a huge portion of the British expeditionary forces. In 1976, Raymond F. McNair wrote, Many have since asked if the calm, overcast weather was just an accident or did some guiding hand interfere, to use Churchill's wording, to make sure that the Allied forces were not annihilated at Dunkirk? Good question. Was it just an accident, or was there a guiding hand protecting those troops? Notice what the Eternal told Job in Job chapter 38, verse 22. Have you, Job, entered the treasury of snow, or have you seen the treasury of hail which I have reserved for the time of trouble, for the day of battle and war? Our world today doesn't think of God as active and alive and intervening down here on earth. But that's what the Bible reveals about him from one end of the book to the other. He controls the elements. He has turned the tides of battle in history many times. There's an interesting description of the English Channel in the book, The Miracle of Dunkirk. It was written by Walter Lord in 1982. The English Channel is usually rough, rarely behaves for very long. Yet a calm sea was essential to the evacuation. And during the nine days of Dunkirk, the Channel was a mill pond. Old timers still say they've never seen it so smooth. Northerly winds would have kicked up a disastrous surf, but the breeze was first from the southwest, later shifting to the east. On June 5th, the day after the evacuation was over, the wind moved to the north and great breakers came rolling onto the empty beaches. Once the evacuation was over, the wind shifted, the channel once again rolled and churned. Was that a coincidence? You decide. What about the clouds and the fog? Walter Lord continues, saying this, Overhead, clouds, mist, and rain always seemed to come at the right moment. The Luftwaffe mounted three all-out assaults on Dunkirk, May 27th, 29th, and June 1st. Each time, the following day saw low ceilings that prevented any effective follow-up. It took the Germans three days to discover the part played by the eastern breakwater, mainly because the southwesterly breezes screened it with smoke. Wow, the absolute perfect combination of clouds and rain to keep the German pilots from destroying what were sitting ducks on the shore. There is a God in heaven who rules supreme. There is a God who directs the weather. That story is told in today's booklet, Who Controls the Weather? You'll be astounded by the accounts in your Bible that tell how God dramatically intervened back then, just like in World War II. You'll see that God's servants throughout history acknowledge the eternal as having power over the elements, and those servants prayed to him when they needed his intervention. It's no different today. The booklet, Who Controls the Weather, will help you grow in faith as you worship the God who sits at the controls of heaven and earth. We'll send you your copy free of charge. Use the phone number or address or website on the screen. Order it today. 
Today's offer is yours absolutely free, no cost, no obligation. Visit us online at tomorrowsworld.org. Find us on Facebook, watch us on YouTube, and follow us on Twitter. In the last segment, we asked the question, did God save the British at Dunkirk? Let's explore another question. If God saved the British, why? Why would a supreme God in heaven intervene on behalf of us here on earth? Does he even notice us? Does he care? And why the British? Are they his favorite people? Well, we know there's no partiality with God. That's in Romans 2.11. You see, God saved the British because he was working out his plan. The British people are descendants of one of the ancient tribes of Israel called Ephraim. Just as the Americans are descendants of the ancient tribe called Manasseh. God's plan was to make Britain great and then to make America great too. You can read these prophecies of the two brothers back in Genesis 48, verses 13 through 19, as we've explained on this program many times. God's plan was to raise the descendants of these ancient nations to a position of economic and military dominance. That's why Great Britain and then the United States have enjoyed such vast wealth and prosperity over the last three centuries. These blessings showered upon us have allowed the work of God, the preaching of the gospel, to take root and to grow and prosper. That work of God has taken His truth to the whole world. That's what you're listening to right now. It's the plain truth about Christ's soon coming kingdom and the wonderful good news that our sins can be covered by the precious blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The religious freedom of our lands has made it possible for millions of human beings over the years to hear the true gospel through this work. Think about it. The world would have been a very different place if the British had been conquered in 1940. That's why God stepped in and saved the British, because there was still work to be done to prepare for Christ's return to this earth. God controls the weather. That's what our booklet today explains. You don't have to wonder or guess. Read it for yourself. Read the accounts in your own Bible of miraculous and dramatic events faithfully recorded and passed down to us. Again, the booklet, Who Controls the Weather, has been prepared just for you so you can really understand this vital topic. Don't wait. Order it now via website or mailing address or phone. We want to send it to you today. Today's offer is yours absolutely free. No cost, no obligation. Call now. 1-800-236-0531. Or write to us at the address on your screen. Or visit us online at tomorrowsworld.org. With this offer, you will also receive your free subscription to Tomorrow's World magazine, full of timely articles and unique insights on today's important issues. And be sure to go to tomorrowsworld.org forward slash digital. Have a digital subscription sent right to your email inbox faster than postal mail. Visit us online now. In the last segment, we explained that God saved the British so they would not be overwhelmed by the Germans, and so we'd have the freedoms we enjoy today. But what have we done with that freedom by and large? Have we used it to honor God and serve our fellow man? You know the answer. We have not as a society. We've fallen into coveting and adultery and murder and all sorts of abominations. We love ourselves more than God. There will be a price to pay as a society. And that brings us to our final question. Will God intervene in the weather again? What's ahead for you and your nation in the coming years? God has used the weather to bless us. And yes, He will also use the weather in the years ahead to shake our nations and bring them to repentance. When God spoke to ancient Israel through the prophet Moses, he told them he would use weather to bless and prosper them and make them great 
That is, if they would honor and obey him. In Leviticus 26 and verse 3, it says this, If you walk in my statutes and keep my commandments and perform them, then I will give you rain in its season. The land shall yield its produce, and the trees of the field shall yield their fruit. But this wasn't a blank check. They had to obey him and love him, or else he would rescind those blessings, and it would hurt. Notice what he said in verse 14. But if you do not obey me, and do not observe all these commandments, and if you despise my statutes, or if your soul abhors my judgments, so that you do not perform all my commandments, but break my covenant, I also will do this to you. Verse 19. I will break the pride of your power. I will make your heavens like iron and your earth like bronze, and your strength shall be spent in vain. For your land shall not yield its produce, nor shall the trees of the land yield their fruit. Read the Old Testament. Read what happened to ancient Israel. It's history. Write in your Bible. While they had times when they obeyed God and flourished, the end of the story was not pleasant. They turned their backs on God, worshipped idols, polluted His holy days, and fell into debauchery. God sent prophets to warn them, like the prophet Amos. In Amos chapter 4, and verse 9, we read it. I blasted you with blight and mildew. When your gardens increased, your vineyards, your fig trees, and your olive trees, the locusts devoured them. Yet you have not returned to me, says the Lord. God started to withdraw blessings of weather when Israel turned away from Him. And yet most people didn't get it. Most people didn't heed the warning. Is it any different today? Over a hundred years later, another prophet, Jeremiah, again warned his people. In Jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 2, we read, You have polluted the land with your harlotries and your wickedness. Therefore, the showers have been withheld, and there has been no latter rain. You have had a harlot's forehead. You refuse to be ashamed. How telling and how similar to today. Our society is filled with people who have no shame. They're not embarrassed to commit adultery, fornication, or other perverted uses of sex. They're not ashamed to sacrifice their children on the altar of convenience. They don't blush at how they worship money and seek to amass material things, but don't even think about what God wants. Should we not expect our weather to turn upside down? Will God not intervene again? Is He not already starting to intervene? Understand, we're not saying that every time we have bad weather, that's God's direct punishment. We've always had periods of bad weather, and even cycles that repeat over time. But as time goes on, watch and be alert for more extreme and disruptive and destructive weather events, especially as our sins increase. In the booklet we're offering today, Who Controls the Weather? Dr. Meredith writes on page 6, The Word of God makes it clear that if the British Commonwealth and American peoples do not repent of our personal and national sins and return to God, He will punish us with floods, drought, famine, earthquakes, and disease epidemics such as we have never known or even imagined. Each of us individually needs to seek God in a way we have never done before. On page 16, he continues, Be honest. As a professing Christian nation, we have polluted the land with our modern adulteries, perversions, crimes, and murders, along with countless other acts that are abominable in the sight of the God of heaven. Is he then justified if he withholds the latter rain from those who disobey him? We should not be surprised at all to see the intensity, frequency, and destructiveness of extreme weather to increase in our Western nations. Why? Because our sins multiply daily. As people, we have come to have utter contempt for God's laws. We are bloody and deceitful nations. We are addicted like no other time in our history, and we worship the self. That's why we can say on God's authority that our weather is going to get worse and more destructive 
and the years just ahead of us. Because God will try to wake us up before it's too late. Once again, today on Tomorrow's World, we're offering the booklet, Who Controls the Weather? Don't shrug it off. When crops fail, when the stores are empty, when food shortages come, it's going to get our nation's attention. But you don't have to wait for that to happen for God to get your attention. As Dr. Roderick Meredith writes on page 1, Jesus Christ predicted that natural disasters would be one of the signs preceding His return to this earth as King of Kings. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Matthew 24, verses 7 and 8. This booklet is a warning from servants of the Almighty God. Normal weather cycles will start changing. In fact, nearly everything around us will start changing unless we nationally or individually repent and truly turn to the God of creation. This booklet will show you why these disasters are occurring and what we must do individually and collectively to protect ourselves. When you read the Bible and you look at events in history, you cannot escape the conclusion that God intervenes in the weather. And He will do it again in the future. When dramatic weather events happen that God prophesied and predicted, will we respond in faith? Are we responding right now or are we scoffing? 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 1. Beloved, I now write to you this second epistle, in both of which I stir up your pure minds by way of reminder that you may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior, knowing this first, that scoffers will come in the last days, walking according to their own lusts and saying, Where is the promise of His coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. There have always been scoffers, Skeptics who won't believe it's God's doing even when 100-pound hailstones fall from the sky. That kind of destruction is going to take place. The weather is going to go haywire. Your Bible prophesies it. Read Revelation 16, 21. Don't worry about what scoffers say. You obey God and put Him first. Seek Him like you've never sought Him before. Keep watching this program. We're here to help you in your walk with Christ. If God has gotten your attention and you have a desire to respond to Him in your life, that's a huge step. But keep going. Keep honoring and obeying God and let Him lead you in your life. God is going to intervene dramatically on this earth very soon. He will shake the wicked but He will also intervene for those who obey Him and love Him. That doesn't mean He won't allow you to be tried and tested and even suffer. But God's Word says that in the time of the end, His faithful people will be saved, even through and by dramatic weather events. Notice Revelation 12 and verse 13. Now when the dragon saw that he had been cast to the earth, he persecuted the woman, that is, the church, who gave birth to the male child. But the woman was given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness to her place where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the presence of the serpent. So the serpent spewed water out of his mouth like a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away by the flood. This is talking about God's faithful flock being taken to a literal, physical place of safety here on earth. They will be pursued by an army. That's what a flood is symbolic of in the Bible. Going on, Revelation 12, 16. But the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon had spewed out of his mouth. Read that again to grasp what's going to happen. God's true and faithful people at some point in the future will be saved when a mighty earthquake literally swallows up a powerful and threatening army. 
big things are going to happen as God intervenes for his people. That's the future and that's the truth. And that's what you can have confidence in. Our world is about to undergo some of the most dramatic events of all of human history. You need this booklet, Who Controls the Weather, to understand what's happening and why. God is still on his throne. He still intervenes and he will accomplish his purpose. He intervened at Dunkirk to accomplish his plan and he will intervene again in the days just ahead of us. Jesus Christ spoke of the days just before his return in Luke 21, 25. And there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars, and on the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them from fear and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. The heavens will literally seem to be coming apart. The natural world will convulse as its creator prepares to make his entrance and come down to earth. For those not ready, this will be horrifying. They'll think the world is coming to an end. That's why we're saying this now, so you don't have to be frightened. For those who understand what God is doing and conform their lives to his word, they will be ready for these events. They won't be shaken or scared. They'll be relieved and excited that their Savior has returned. Notice in verse 28, Now when these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heads, because your redemption draws near. Thank God that He will intervene soon. Make sure you're ready so you can look forward to these days ahead with confidence. The eternal God does intervene in the affairs of the earth. And he uses the weather as a powerful tool to announce he's coming. Thank you for watching today. And don't forget to order today's literature, Who Controls the Weather? And remember to tune in regularly on television or on the internet for each edition of Tomorrow's World. In this world of uncertainty and confusion and chaos, you need the biblical clarity and spiritual focus that this program can give you. Each week, Richard Ames, Gerald Weston, Wallace Smith, and I will bring you the truth about prophecies that are coming alive right now. There is good news. Jesus Christ will establish His kingdom on this earth soon. God speed that day. We'll see you next time. To take advantage of today's free offer or view today's program now or anytime, go to tomorrowsworld.org. Find us on Facebook, watch us on YouTube, and follow us on Twitter. The preceding program is produced by the Living Church of God.